What's going on, everybody? I'm really excited to be getting on with uh, the second round of beer can tier lists. I was really thrown it around with myself, like, you know, should I make another video or should I not? Am I, is it too tired? Am I beating a dead horse? And then I saw this one can yesterday, this one can, and it's gonna, it's gonna be the first can I'll show you, so you don't have to wait that long. But this, this can kind of, inspired me to make another tier list video. I'm going to try to not to make it a 30 minute video this time. So I reduced the amount of cans from 30 to 20, which isn't much, but uh, it's a start. We're just going to jump right into it. Um, show you all this first can, which is just fantastic. Also, if you, if you notice, I got rid of the F tier and just let hot garbage kind of take the place of F. All right. So let's get to this first can. I'm I'm really excited to be able to see this. This is a fantastic can. Uh, you can tell that it's a husk of corn on a can. That's that's freaking hilarious. It's a it's a corn can. I mean, it's so funny. And I love corn. I mean, you might not know that about me, but I, I love I love a good uh, corn on the cob. I'm a corn on the cob kind of guy. You know, shredded corn, corn in the can, street corn. I love corn. I'm a corn guy. And this can is just, it just really resonates with me. I saw it on uh, You Betcha's uh, YouTube, who uh, his, his kind of running gag is drinking bush light. So it was fitting for, for him to uh, display this out. But I mean, this is, this is a great can. I mean, just even if you don't like corn, you, you kind of have to agree this is a great can. Uh, it's for the farmers, obviously, because that's what the corn is. Corn is a big part of beer. S tier or A tier? I mean, fuck, man. That is tough. That is a tough question. I really like corn. Corn is probably one of my favorite vegetables. I think we're gonna have to move it to S tier because I, I just I just love corn. All right, on to the next one. Uh, Budweiser Nitro Reserve Gold. This is a really unique beer in the fact that it defies all cultural norms and expectations of beer. You're not supposed to pour it a hard pour into the glass. Uh, you're not supposed to shake it at all. But with Budweiser Nitro Reserve Gold, you're supposed to do both of those things. You're supposed to shake it and pour it hard into the glass, which is really weird, it's really strange. It sounds really interesting to me. Not really sure why they had to call it gold and go with the gold branding, because you can't really see the gold on the red background can't even fucking read what it says on the can so that's a that's a real letdown can wise i mean we're not rating the taste of the beer and the quality and the uniqueness of the beer no 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 we are rating the can quality the can design of the beer itself so and i don't like i don't like it we're gonna put that at d i'm just really disappointed because they had such an interesting product and they had to design it in such a way that you can't read what's on the can. From a, from like my distance, I'm sure if I had it right in front of me, I could read it. But that's besides the point. Budweiser and Clamato Picante Chilada. Uh, the Chilada cans have always been pretty interesting to me. I know Bud Light makes a Clamato. Uh, they collab with Clamato as well. It's an interesting kind of formulation here you, you, you got going on. I mean, Clamato is like a tomato juice with some clam um additive to it i believe i guess when you add beer it makes a chilada obviously this can's interesting it's uh it's kind of dated but you know i like i like some dated cans you kind of got some perforations coming at the at the the top lid here and then down here at the uh, at the base uh, and you have a, a nice splashy looking chilada with a salted rim and a jalapeno and a lime it's a pretty nice can. I think it's a, uh, I think it's an A can. I'm willing to say it's an A can. I mean, I hope y'all agree with me. Uh, I hope you do, because that's where I'm putting it. Next up, we have Bud Light Lemonade. Bud Light Lemonade. This is really interesting. It started out, I believe, as a, as a uh, Bud Light Lemonade Rita, like how they did the the Lima Ritas and the the Ritas line of beverage beverages since the rebrand they're not they're not branded bud light anymore they're branded rita's but i believe they're still being produced by uh, bud light a bud light lemonade this is interesting 
It's a lemonade beer. This can is really nice. You gotta love the yellow. I mean, you know, I'm not a big fan of of the uh, traditional Bud Light current can because it's, I don't know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole laundry list of things I don't really like much about it, but I do like how the yellow contrasts the blue, or the two shades of blue and the white. Uh, it's really nice. And this this lemon you have going on here, half cut lemon, and then the rest of the lemon is like spiral cut, spiral peeled. It's a really nice can. I'd be willing to give it an A tier. Really nice can. You can't, you can't argue with that. So we've talked about Bud Light Lemonade, but let's not forget what started the Bud Light Variations. Bud Light Lime. Bud Light Lime, I don't remember exactly when it came out. This was the original can. It's a, it's, it's kind of drab, it's kind of boring. You got, you got some lime wedges in there. And yeah, the can's green, you know, whoop de doo uh, That's great, good effort. Not really, I mean, I don't really think it's a fantastic looking can. I'd be willing to give it a C. I'd save it from D or hot garbage. I'd give it a C. C. Now we're gonna fast forward a few years. Uh, the Bud Light Lime current can. This is this is really nice. It, it has the, you know, the corporate, all, all the Budweiser Bud Light cans, they look the same, okay? I mean, that they do. I mean, they're, they're, that's what they're going for. They should look the same. But this one does have a green color. And I know that I was getting on the last can for having a green color and nothing else, but I really like the the ornateness of the top half of the can. I mean, it's just really nice to me. Hits a it hits a note with me inside. It's green. It's not blue. But it's very interesting. And I wasn't gonna put Bud Light Orange on here too, but I really like Bud Light Orange because the can is orange and not blue which is a, a nice, refreshing change from what you usually see with Bud Light, because it's blue. We'll give it a B. It's it's not creative, it's corporate, you know? The corporate, all you did was make it green and put lime on it, and so you did that, and you probably changed some words up here at the top, and it's not like you can read them from here. So, um, I'd be happy to put this at B. Uh, next up, we have Guinness. This is a kind of disappointing can. I don't exactly know when this can was being used or being introduced. I feel like they've changed it a little bit, but mostly it stayed the same. It's, it's black with some gold accents. This is not an exciting can by any means. It doesn't, if I saw a lineup of 10, 15 cans and I had to pick which one was my favorite, I wouldn't even give this one a second look. I mean, honestly, we'll put it at D. Because there's not really any redeeming qualities about it at all. I mean, you got this harp thing, um, established 1759. I don't really, I mean, I don't, the can, the design doesn't stand out to me. I'm sure in Ireland, I would be fucking humbled to death. But next up we have the Dos Equis. This is the, this is the summer can that's coming out this summer, summer 2020. This is pretty cool. Summer of Dos. You know, fingers crossed that the summer of dose will be celebrated uh, with all of us together, like uh, drinking should be celebrated together. It's very depressing to drink by yourself. Uh, you want to drink with each, well, you want to drink with your your uh, your buddies. Let's just hope that the summer of dose is still on. Okay, let's hope the summer of dose hasn't been postponed to next year. Nevertheless. Uh, this is a pretty okay can. I wouldn't say it's great. You have a lot of designs in the middle of the X's, in the red X. But otherwise, they, I mean, they didn't really do anything. It's not really interesting um, to me. Give it a C, because they, they did put some effort into changing it for the summer, 2020. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that at C. We'll put that at C. Now this one, this one I really like. This one I really like. Oh man. The Dos Equis Mexican Pale Ale can. Oh man, I mean, just look at it. Just, just, just look at that for a minute. I'll let you look at it. Maybe a few seconds. A minute's a little too long. That can is fantastic. That can is beautiful. I knew it. I didn't even have to see the can for myself. All I had to see was the box where they kept the bottles. The box 
where you sell, you know, you have like the 12 pack of bottles. All I had to see was the packaging of that to know that the can would be an easy S tier. It's a very powerful looking man of stature. He has a gold uh, object on his head. You got a nice little aquamarine little thing going on at the top of the can. And then you have the Dos Equis seal in the middle, just like stamped right there. Uh, subtle, but not too subtle, but not too um, in your face. Uh, Mexican pale ale with citrus hops and a hint of heat. You know, I, you gotta love it. I mean, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Instant S tier. All right, so this next can, I'm kind of putting in here because I almost got canceled by a um, few people from in, that live in Rochester, New York, because I unwitting, unknowingly, uh, put their their beloved Genesee Light local brew in the hot garbage section. To be fair, the can was a total piece of shit. The, the can today is a total piece of shit. I will not back down from that statement. However, I want to provide a little bit of redeeming quality with the previous Genesee Light can, which is shortened to be Jenny Light, which is a much better can much better can than the one that's going on today. The one that they're burning out today is fucking horrible. This can, this can I can work with. I can work with this can. You have a little bit of water, water liquid flowing at the top. And then it says Jenny Light. You have, you have these nice curves on the label. This is great. This is good so far. We're gonna to progress to the bottom of the can. Genesee Brewing Company established 1878. This is, I can work with this, okay? I can work with something like this. I cannot work with a shitty piece of shit Genesee Light can that they're making now, the 2020 can. It's terrible, I'm not gonna argue with you. This can is easily a B can. Granted, I understand that it's nice to be minimalist when you're making cans, but that was too minimalist. That was, that was like Microsoft Paint minimalist which is ridiculous. We shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be. So we're going to put that to B. I hope that makes everybody happy. Um, if they, if people get on me for not moving it to S tier, uh, there's no argument there. You know that you're incorrect on that argument. It's not an S can. It's never, it never had, it, was, it could never be an S can. Shiner Bach. This was a fan request. And this is a nice can. I mean, it's, it's good. It, it feels like it's been around for a long time. I like how at the top of the can it says serve cold and often. That's, that's pretty funny. Yeah. And then you have this, this animal. I don't know what kind of animal that is. I want to say llama, but it's not. I don't think it's a llama. It's got those horn things. At the bottom it says nothing's finer than a shiner. Can's okay. It's not. It's not the best can. I'd be happy to put it at B. It doesn't really, you know, dare to do anything. It's kind of subtle and, you know, conservative. The Shinerbot can says, "I'm not going to offend anybody by my design. I just want to get people to buy me, and I want to be respected." And you know, I can respect being respected. I can respect that. But uh, being conservative doesn't really get you any any points for going above and beyond like the bush light can corn that's above and beyond that is creative that is helpful to the corn farmers across this country they were really taking a step there and that's what these beer can designers beer can companies beer companies should follow they should follow in their footsteps make a really cool collectible can that's what they should do all right i'll step off my soapbox for a little bit as we go to the Carback, the Carback, am I saying that right? Brewing Company. Uh, this is Crawford Bach. When I was finding this picture, I, I thought like, you know, Crawford Bach is kind of like the Tito's of beer because Tito's is, as y'all probably very well know, is brewed in, uh, is distilled rather in Austin, Texas. And it's distributed all over the world. I mean, people love Tito's because it is consistently a very high-end uh, vodka for a very affordable, respectable price. Crawford Bach, I feel like even though it has the 
uh, Houston Astros logo on the bottom of the can. It is distributed outside of Houston and people love it. And the fans love Crawford Bach, even though they're not in Houston. That's why I think it's the Tito's of beer. This is a pretty nice can. I'll give it an A. It's an A can. I mean, you know, my favorite color is orange. Gradients down orange. The, the color gets lighter and lighter until it hits the middle and then it becomes yellow. I like it. I really like it. I like it a lot. Okay, this one I've never heard of. Carlsberg. It says on this box here, by appointment to the Royal Danish Court. So I have reason to believe the Danes made it. Danes have something to do with Carlsberg. Also, I'm just now seeing that it says 1847 Copenhagen at the bottom. So this is this is a Denmark beer. I like the word Carlsberg. That's pretty nice. The red crown at the top. That's pretty nice too. But the green just reminds me of Heineken. You know, I mean, Heineken is out of Holland, which is I, th I think is in the Netherlands. These are pretty close to one another, now that I'm thinking about it. Carlsberg and Heineken. Hmm. I don't know. 1847, I wonder who came first. So that would be an interesting question. Besides that, besides that, I mean, the can's okay. I like the word Carlsberg. It's pretty nice. The Red Crown, it's nice too. It's nice too. It's not the best. I think it has uh, C written all over it. C for Carlsberg, C for Carlsberg. We have our very famous Mexican import beer, Pacifico Clara. Um, I wanna send my thoughts and prayers out to the people of Mexico because I have just received word that they are out of beer. I believe that all the local cerveza brewers have shuttered their doors. So there's no beer in the country, which is very sad. That should not happen to any to any country, any country at all. But the, the best we can do is to appreciate their culture and their heritage in the world of cerveza. So without further ado, let's let's look at this Pacifico can. It's yellow. Okay, that's nice. You got a little life circle here. You got an anchor, that's nice. You got this little red mountain in the middle of the ocean, that's nice too. You got some green. Coming out of the bottom. Okay. It's it's kind of uh, it needs an upgrade. It needs it needs something done to it. It looks dated and not really in a good way, like Bud Light 2002. I'd give it a B. It doesn't really dare to go anywhere, but it's uh, it's okay. Line and Kugel's Summer Shandy. I doubt anybody has heard of this. Um, I had this once in a bottle. And I literally had no idea that it was a lemonade flavored beer. I had no idea. You, you, I had no idea. You couldn't have told me. I mean, you could have fooled me. Fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. It fooled me. We can't get fooled again. This is the current can that Wine and Coogles is putting out. Um, I really like it. I like the can. I like that in this in this right section here, you have a cut lemon and then a little bit of wheat symbolizing the lemonade flavor and the wheat of the beer colliding together to create Line and Cool's Summer Shandy. At the bottom, you have a lake with trees and what looks to be like a, um, a water skier on a boat. Just fantastic. You know, you gotta love water sports. It's a nice can. It's it's uh hmm. Is it A or S? Mm, fuck. Is it that good to be an S can? What's an S tier? Is it just the the corn? Oh no, the pale ale. Gotta love the pale ale. Man, I mean, it's not that great. I mean, it's good. It's very nice. You gotta love it. But it's not fantastic. So we'll put it at A. We'll put that at A. I think that's fair. Okay, let's get serious now. Miller High Life, the champagne of beers. Really? The champagne of beers. That's the best you could come up with. When was the last time you saw somebody drinking Miller High Life at a party? Huh? Nobody drinks Miller High Life. It's 2020. The only thing I remember about Miller High Life was 
this uh, very large man who was delivering Miller High Life to uh, suppliers and vendors across the country. Someone's about to lose their selling Miller High Life privileges. Can I borrow that for a second? Hamburger 11.50. Are you for real? Excuse Step me. aside, mon ami. Pardon moi. Excuse us. See, this beer is about helping people live the high life. It's a good, honest beer at a tasty price. Yeah, we have a move. Mess with the high life, and the high life will mess with you. 11.50 for a hamburger. Y'all must be crazy. <laughs> were funny commercials okay they were great i mean they've fallen off it's just it's, it's sad there probably is a cult following behind miller high life just like there is probably behind budweiser select although i wouldn't know why it's a boring can it just doesn't make sense it doesn't make any sense at all it, it just doesn't make sense i don't get it i don't understand i i'm Hot garbage. Hot garbage. I kind of feel bad. I kind of feel bad, but not much. I don't like Miller High Life. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know. Heineken 0.0. .0. Now, this is something I wouldn't have expected myself to review. But, nevertheless, here we are. I mean, look at the can. This can is fantastic. It's got a little bit of blue as opposed to the normal Heineken can that was reviewed last time with mostly 100%, like 95% green on the outside, except for the red star. This can, you have a little bit of blue, and this is this is a nice refreshing change, but not in the sense of like Bud Light Lime refreshing change, because all they did was change the entire can to green. And with this, they left the green because they realized that green is a part of their culture and their heritage. However, they're willing to shape that culture and heritage. You put some blue in there, you're pretty badass, in my opinion. Fuck. You know, the balls it takes to change color on a can? Ooh, I mean, that's crazy. 0.0, I mean, what's the point, honestly, of drinking beer, in my opinion? This is my opinion. I understand why people drink 0.0 .0 beer, but to me, personally, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. And you gotta love the outside of this can. We're gonna have to put that at S tier. That's a fantastic can. This is Daybreak Four Grain Breakfast Beer made with honey and milk sugar. This is a 5.2% ABV beer, and you're supposed to drink it for breakfast, apparently. It's an interesting take on beer. It's an interesting take. For beer for breakfast, probably wouldn't do it. But it has honey and milk sugar in it. Maybe I could taste that. I don't know. I didn't taste lemonade in the lining kugels. Anyway, like I said, we're not talking about the inside of the beer. We're talking about the can. And the can is not very good, to be honest with you. It's a D can. The only thing it has going for it is the fact that it says breakfast beer. Maybe it's not a D can. Maybe it's a C can because it's breakfast beer. If it was just a normal beer, it would probably be hot garbage. But because it's a breakfast beer, it's pretty hilarious. We're gonna have to put it at C. Next up, we have Sol Cerveza, which is also a Mexican beer. It's in the same family as like Modelo, Corona. I'm pretty sure they're all brewed by the same people, uh, except for Modelo. I don't know. Tecate, Dosequis, yada yada yada. You you get it. Sol, this is an interesting can. I mean, you you kind of got. A little creepy moon man coming out of the bottom fourth of the can. Um, but the 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 way that soul is is designed on the can, that's pretty nice. And I like the rays of sunshine that come out of the creepy moon man. They come all over the can. You gotta love it. You gotta like it. You don't have to love it. It's a B can. The moon man is pretty special, and I like how the sun rays project to almost all parts of the beer. The gold background on the red text is more easy, is easier to read than the Budweiser Nitro Reserve, which was red with gold text, which was a terrible decision. I don't know why you had to name it gold. You don't it, name it, I don't know, name it any other color. Name it something that you can read off of, off of red. Fuck. Man. All right, our final can. This is an interesting can. 100% sure nobody's ever heard of Bud Extra before. 
Bud Extract. It was a beer with caffeine, ginseng, and guarana extract with natural flavor. It was a 6.2-ish percent ABV beer. It was very problematic. Anheuser-Busch wanted to compete with the original Four Loco recipe. When I say Four Loco, I'm talking about the original Four Loco, Four Loco with caffeine. So they made up Budweiser Extra. There was a few law. There were a few lawsuits. Nowadays, you don't see any beer with caffeine or ginseng. I mean, it's basically combining Red Bull with beer, and we all know how bad Red Bull and alcohol uh, combine and turn out. You know how bad that turns out. This can, though, this can is pretty interesting. Black U, and then you have two reds coming down, and they combine at the bottom. It's an interesting can. It's a very interesting story behind it. I love the story behind this can. I mean, the, the Budweiser Extra. I wish I could just taste it to see what was going on, but this got discontinued around 2008, 2009. So there, there would be no way I could. Can's okay. I like the story behind it better. I'd give it a, uh, I'd give it a B. I like how the the E is like an X in like the exponent area of the B. Like I would drink Budweiser Extra. Just to say that I drank Budweiser Extra. I'm sure it wasn't good. Uh, I think it was one of their major marketing flops and commercial failures of all time, but it's a piece of history and it should be known and it should be appreciated. I'm going to get off my soapbox here. We're, we'll put it at, uh, we'll put it at B. Okay. So let's review. In S tier, we have Bud Light corn can. God, I love that, man. I love that. That is, that would be like S plus. If there was an S plus tier, that corn can would be at the top. That would be S plus tier all day, all day. And then we have the, the Dos Equis Mexican Pale Ale. Gotta love that. And the Heineken 0.0. Gotta love that. A tier, we have Budweiser and Clamato with Chilada or something like that. That's nice. I like it. Bud Light Lemonade. Interesting. Crawford Bach. I like it. Lion and Kugel Summer Shandy, gotta love that. B tier, Bud Light Lime, Jenny Light, Shiner Bach, Pacific Eau Clara, Soul, and Budweiser Extra. C tier, you have Bud Light Lime, Free Facelift, uh, Dos Equis Summer Cans 2020, Carlsberg, and the Daybreak Breakfast Beer. D tier, you have Budweiser Nitro Reserve Gold and the Guinness Can, and the Hot Garbage, you have Miller High Life. What a piece of shit. What a total piece of shit. That about sums it up here. Uh, thank you for watching all this all the way to the end. I know I, I said I was trying to shave some time off of this, but it probably ended up being longer than the first one. Because I, uh, I like to talk about the history behind the cans rather than just the design of the cans themselves. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate uh, You know, I, I love making content for you guys. I know that, you know, we're all sucking home, waiting for something to watch. You know, we're sitting there fucking refreshing the Tinder, the, the Twitter feed uh, every five seconds and the Instagram every five seconds. So we're, we're all pretty desperate for content. Like if you're anything like me, I'm pretty desperate for content. So I just wanted to make some for you guys because it's the least I can do, honestly. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I, thought it, I hope you thought it was informative. Um, anyway.